Hi, I'm Betsy Nicoletti. Thanks for joining me today. This quick presentation is going to cover two topics. The 2024 new HCPCS code from Medicare for assessing a patient's needs for the social determinants of health and ICD-10 coding for those for the social determinants of health. So the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, defines the social determinants of health as economic and social conditions that influence the health of people and communities. They're not specific risks for a specific disease or injury, but they affect health outcomes, um, the patient's health and outcomes. And they don't include things that we patients do, like smoking and drinking and sitting on the couch reading novels. The CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, said that there are estimates that about 50% of an individual's health is directly linked to these social determinants of health. And broadly, they define this as economic stability, education access and quality, healthcare access and quality, neighborhood and built environment, and social and community context, which includes factors like housing, food, nutrition access, and transportation needs. And the quotes here are from the 2024 Physician Fee Schedule, which was released early November 2023. They say a risk assessment without appropriate follow-up for identified needs would serve little purpose. So we're gonna see the code, the HCPCS code for a risk assessment, but keep in mind that CMS is saying, you're not just doing this risk assessment, you're doing it with appropriate follow-up. The They say that the identified needs must be documented in the medical record and may be documented using a set of ICD-10Z codes. We are requiring that the SDOH needs identified through risk assessment be documented in the medical record. And we are actively encouraging Z code reporting to improve, you, improve your data and understanding. So they're, they're requiring that you write in the chart, you know, the patient has food insecurity, and they're recommending, they're encouraging that you use the ICD-10 code for that. Now, if you're part of an ACO or you have a risk adjustment contract, you must add them to the claim form in order for anybody to know about them or credit them. So here's the HCPCS code, G0136, Administration of a Standardized standardized evidence-based social determinants of health risk assessment, five to 15 minutes, not more than every six months. So they, they don't want you to do it. They're putting it on a, a frequency limit. This isn't something you're gonna do regularly. They want, to, they want this to be part of a comprehensive social history in relation to some evaluation and management visits and certain behavioral visits. Rep represented by some Z codes in that in those categories. And this code was added permanently to the telehealth list. Now they emphasize that this isn't a screening service. You know, when you go in to see the doctor and they do that two question depression screening, CMS says, this is not a screening. Don't use a portal to screen all patients prior to the visit. In most cases, it's not gonna be performed prior to the visit. And they acknowledge that this makes it a little bit more difficult in the patient, in the workflow, but they believe that the clinician is going to go in, see the patient, and because they identify something about the today's visit or they know this patient, they're gonna see the medical necessity for a risk assessment. And this is going to be done with a standardized tool. We reiterate that the risk assessment code, when performed in conjunction with an ENM or behavioral health visit, is not designed to be a screening, but rather tied to one or more known or suspected SDOH needs that may interfere with the patient's with the practitioner's diagnosis or treatment of the patient. 
and more quotes from them. We continue to believe that follow-up or referral is an important aspect of following up on findings from this risk assessment. And remember on the third slide, a risk assessment without appropriate follow-up would serve little purpose. So they understand if you have a patient who has had um, long-term intermittent homelessness, you're not gonna all of a sudden magically get a follow-up that takes away all of their problems. But they say, if you aren't doing some kind of follow-up, if you aren't, um, and this doesn't have to be done internally, referring the patient for some community services, then what's the point of doing the risk assessment? And it's focused on issues that impact the practitioner's ability to diagnose and treat the patient. So when we do, when can we do this? We can do it on a day of an evaluation and management office visit, not 99211. It can be done on the day of an annual wellness visit if the physician, NP, or PA is doing the wellness visit. It can be done at a TCM visit. It may not be done on an inpatient admission or subsequent hospital visit or an ED visit because CMS doesn't believe that at that point you would be doing the necessary follow-up. It can be done at a discharge code if you're doing a referral, you're trying, you're making arrangements for some kind of a follow-up because that's important for CMS after the assessment. It may also be billed on a psychiatric diagnostic evaluation code 90791 and these health behavior assessment and intervention codes, which are listed on the slide. CMS says this may be done by psycho clinical psychologists, but they did not include social workers as providers who can do this assessment. Now, they said a standardized tool. And so, of course, people asked them between the proposed and the final rule, do you have any examples for us? And they do have some examples for us. And you can download the um, PDF of these slides so that you can see this later. I probably should have started with this. This code has a work RVU of 0.18. If you're doing it in an outpatient service or as a discharge visit, the facility fee is $8.84 national and in place of service office, $18.66. All right, documentation guidelines. So these are straight from the um, official guidelines that are in the front of our ICD-10 book or which you can download from the CDC website. And they, when discussing the social determinants of health diagnosis codes, they say documentation by a clinician or patient reported information that's signed off by a clinician, that the patient expressed concerns with access and availability of food would, would support assignment of a code for food insecurity. And similarly, medical record documentation that the patient is homeless would support code assignment of homelessness. And that's a subcategory because Z59.0 is not a complete code. Code assignment, and remember the, the official guidelines are for both inpatient and facilities and office visits and outpatient work. So code assignment may be based on medical record documentation from clinicians involved in the care of the patient who are not the patient's provider, since this information represents social information rather than medical diagnoses. So for example, a social worker, community health worker, care manager, or nurse, if their information, if their documentation is in the medical record, if you had a coder who was abstracting for codes like they do in a facility, very frequently, always, then even if the physician or nurse practitioner or physician assistant hadn't documented the homelessness, you could pick up that code from what the social worker documented. Now, in, the, in medical practices, most frequently, the only way we're gonna get a code assigned is when the physician, NP or PA, closes the note and before they do that, they select the diagnosis code. In some bigger practices, you may have a coder who goes behind and um, adds codes, subtracts codes, asks a physician, could we add this code? 
Um, but in, but essentially, in medical practices, we're going to count on our physicians, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants to select these codes in the assessment. Patient self-reported documentation may be used to assign codes for the social determinants of health, as long as that self-reported information is signed off by and incorporated into the medical record. So if you have a, have a questionnaire that you give to patients, or if your medical assistant helps a patient to answer some of these questions, and that becomes part of today's record, it's incorporated into the encounter note, and the, the physician or NP or PA signs off on it, then if a coder was coding it, they could code it. But again, in most of our cases, we're counting on the practitioner to select the code. So what are these codes? Z55 to Z60, are defined as persons with potential health hazards related to socioeconomic and psychosocial circumstances. So we know that they're not going to change the payment on the individual claim, unless we use GO136, you get a little more money for that. But it communicates to our payers the social conditions that affect outcomes and costs. It tells the story about the population of patients you're seeing. So if you're part of an ACO or you have any risk-based contracts, you want to use these codes. Now, there are probably about 200 of them, 150 of them. Not all of them are going to be relevant, but um, so I'm going to go through the, what the categories are and then some that I think would be important. But I, it would be helpful if a clinical person and a coder looked at these list of codes and said, these are the ones that are important for us. So problems related to education, employment, occupational exposure to risk factors, related to the physical environment, related to housing, um, social upbringing, there is no Z61, um, or excuse me, social environment or upbringing, other support services. So you can see that some of those others are maybe not as specific. Um, some we're going to use and some we might not. So I would look at the occupational exposure category. I would look at Z57 because I think that there are probably patients who are working in um, agriculture, in factories, uh, in places where they can. there's still smoke, um, casinos, for example, where some of these codes would be important for you. Um, Certainly you're gonna to wanna to put Z59 in some of these codes in your favorites list. And the definitions of these are in the ICD-10 book. So you can pull those up and, and look at those and see which ones. I mean, they are examples of, the, of them, what it includes. I would certainly put food insecurity and other specified lack of adequate food in a favorites list insufficient social insurance and wealth, welfare support. If you lived in Flint, Michigan in the past years, you probably would have Z58.6 on one of your um, one of your favorites lists. Transportation insecurity, basic services unavailable in a physical in, uh, environment. I read a headline in a newspaper that there are these group of people who who's who were able to move back into an apartment building that it had some environmental problems. Only one problem, it didn't have gas or heat. Oh, thanks, that's great. Basic services unavailable in the physical environment. And then in Z65, so child welfare, look at Z62, there are a couple of other category, complete codes there that might be interesting to you. And Z65 for problems related um, to imprisonment. And then finally, these last two codes, they are not social determinants of health codes, but I think these I would put into a favorites list if I could, because if you have patients who either can't afford their medication or underdosing intentionally for a reason, that obviously is going to affect outcomes. You might want to be able to pull up a list of these. So thank you very much for um, watching this video today. It's one of a number of short videos that we have on YouTube and 
embedded in certain articles in codingintel.com. So please take a look at the site. Thanks very much for joining me.